Today I'm gonna to show you how to make modern 2000s type beats just like Kid Leroy. Check it out. For these type of beats, generally the BPM is gonna be somewhere around 97 to 105. I call this like the Taiga twerk tempo because all of his songs are like right there. This is gonna give you that 2000s kind of bouncy type vibe. The second thing we need to get right for these kind of beats are the drums. Getting that 2000 sound is all about getting the type of sounds that, you know, Pharrell and Neptunes, Timbaland, all those, you know, kind of producers were using during that time. The two main kits that I go to for stuff like this are the WB5's 90s, 2000s R&B kit and the Lunch 77 Neptunes kit. Both of these are free on Reddit and I'll leave the links in the description so you can go cop. So now let's build up the drums. The first thing I did was get a kick going and I layered two kicks to do this. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. And here's the pattern. A really useful tip for these kind of beats is to use accent kicks. And what I mean by that is using kicks to kind of accent the beat by turning the velocity down. So you can see right here, both of these kicks are turned down a lot. So like one 60 dB, the other is 10 dB. It really helps to give it more bounce. A good place to put these accent kicks is at the end of beats. So like right here. And it sort of helps you just like whip into the next bar. Another thing that you really gotta be aware of when you're layering sounds is phase. And here's why, check this out. So if I don't have the Neutron plugin on either of the kicks, here's what it sounds like together. It sounds kind of just weak and wimpy and like we ain't, we ain't really about that, you know, over here. <laughs> so what I did was put these plugins on, went here. With this plugin, it's super easy to get things in phase. So you just go here, it's on the side chain to the other kick. And so I already did that. And so you can see the adjustments that it made and listen to the kick now. Now it's thick and punchy and just like, Mm. So now that we've got our kick, usually you're gonna have a snare, a clap, or a rim, or a combination of both on the two and four. And so that's what we've got here. I wanted to make it a little bit more modern, so I just layered a Metro Boomin' clap, but the other sounds, you can see like very classic, like R&B 2000s type sounds, especially that one. That's that Aaliyah snare. Once we've got that foundation, now we need to add that real sauce, which is percussion. The types of sounds typically you'd go for for this kind of thing are shakers, open hats, bongos type thing. Here's what all that sounds like. Oftentimes I see with the shaker and hi-hats and these kind of beats, you know, like in trap, usually you have like a steady hi-hat, often like a two-step kind of thing. But on these, I think it really gives it more bounce a lot when it's not steady like that. For instance, like we just have the shaker going. I'll put the metronome just so you can kind of hear the downbeats. The last tip for the drums is that every four to eight bars, it's good to have a little switch up, whether it's a drum fill with some toms, or even if it's something as simple as this, where I just, you know, kind of doubled up on the snare. When I used to listen to my tracks, a lot of times they sounded really loopy. And this is how you get out of that by making sure that, you know, you're doing little changes every four to eight bars just to help the track move along. So at the end of the bar, notice what I did. Next is the melody. And for these kind of beats, you can really do, you know, a lot of different things. I would say Xenology is one of the best plugins for these kind of beats because it has a lot of kind of Neptunes, like classic type sounds. But for this, I wanted to make it a little more like soulful and modern. And so I ended up just taking a sample from Splice, the Knox soul sample, chopped it up, put some OTT on it. This is what it ended up sounding like. So automatically that just like puts me in this like party type vibe. Like I just wanna like, yeah, 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 you know? But I still wanted to thicken it up a little bit, especially for the chorus, because I was like, you know, I, you know, I can have that going for the verse, but for the chorus, I wanted a little more like, mm, like a little more. So I ended up adding this stock Ableton wavetable synth that I made, and it's basically just following the same chords that are in the sample. Took out a little bit of the low, you know, just so I can leave room for the kick in the bass. Here's what that sounds like with the sample.
for the main building blocks, the last thing we've got is the base. And for these, once again, Xenology is a good go-to. A lot of times people will use like slap bases or kind of intentionally fake signing bases. Cause they'll, you know, back in the day they would use a lot of keyboards and like play in the bass. Sometimes, you know, they wouldn't get like a bass player to do it. But for this track, I wanted to actually add an 808. And so that's what I ended up doing. Got this 808 right here. Got this little chain here, just compressing a few dB, a little bit of God particle, basic compression. I wanna squeeze the 808 a little bit just so I can really get a lot of loudness you know, when it comes to the master. Also, I've got Soothe. I got this from Jason Joshua. This is how I've been doing all my side chain with the kick recently. And here's what all of that sounds like together. Now I wanna go into some arrangement type things. A really cool trick that I like to do a lot for these kind of beats is sort of introduce the main theme with the drums but filter it. Something I used to do this a lot is this Futzbox plugin. I like to think of music like a movie. You really wanna tell a story and so I'm trying to figure out like, even if the same things are going on, how can I present it in a little bit of a different way? And I think this kind of filter technique is a good way to do that. And is uh, something that a lot of people do. I have this effect just automated for the intro and listen to how it comes from the intro into the verse. So usually you'll go like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and these type of things, you might have a pre-chorus, but what that means for us is that after the first eight bars of the verse, let's say we're doing a 16 bar verse, we want something to happen. And the two things that I'm usually thinking of when I want something to happen like this are, have I brought in the bass yet? Do other other like drum, you know, percussive things or things that are adding movement to the track that I can add? Or does it need to be something melodic or tonal? And so for this case, I actually did a couple of different things. I brought in a couple of the percussion, kind of teasing what's to come in the hook. And then I also chopped up this little vocal loop that I found, put Pan Man on it to, you know, make it go left and right. And this is what that sounds like. And here's what it sounds like with the sample. And then another trick I like to do is on a 16 bar verse, I like using the last four almost as like a breakdown or I think of it like a little detour right before the hook. So that hook like just hits really hard. So for this section, I added this sequence angst bass from Current. kind of broke down the drums a little bit. So instead of like the syncopated like doom, 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 kind of thing, I went to just like a four on the floor kind of. In a place where I think you can really do a lot and almost to me, you know, in my opinion, defines producers is what they decide to do at the end of sections or right before the chorus. And so for me, I chose to have a moment with the sample and the drums and sort of have like a cool little fill of our kick. And then I also layered it with this kind of weird like Umru kick that's going through this cold fire plugin, which I actually really love for just giving sounds, you know, they're just making them sound weird. So it's going through that completely shredded preset. And then we have this fill that I'm running through Infiltrator, six voice ensemble, just to make it sound a little more weird. And then this little percussion acting as like a reverse, like whoosh type thing going into the chorus. Master Chain, got gold clip, doing a little bit of clipping, maybe like 2 dB, a little bit of God Particle, and then just the Ableton limiter. And if y'all have Ableton, don't sleep on this limiter. It's actually really, really far. They did an update recently with 12.1 and it's, really sick. And this is what it sounds like all together.
for today's video. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.